Hello friends and welcome to Fire Emblem Discussion. Today we're going to be talking about more survival tips for Maddening Mode, and these are going to be more advanced than our previous tips, so if you haven't seen the original Maddening Survival Guide video, go check it out, the link is in the description. But for today, we're going to be getting into a few things that I've noticed players don't utilize or they struggle to utilize so that you can have an easier time in your Maddening playthrough. And of course, this does apply to both New Game Plus and just New Game. First thing I want to talk about is gardening. Gardening happens in the monastery, in the greenhouse, and it seems like a really tedious task that isn't worth your time in a lot of instances. But it's important to know that you can get some very, very important stat boosters from gardening if you plant the correct seeds. Now, I'm going to go over three different stat boosters that you can receive and which seeds to plant to get those, but I will post in the description the website that I use to, to figure this stuff out. It also tells you what vegetables and, uh, and other things you'll get from every single seed in the game. But today we're just going to focus on three that I think are the most important. So first we're going to talk about speed boosters or the speed carrot, which you can get from planting Nord Solid seeds or pale blue flower seeds. Pale blue flower seeds you can actually buy from the foreign merchants at the monastery, so I would definitely recommend stocking up on those if you're looking for more speed boosters. And again, get as, like speed carrots are so good, plus one speed can make a huge difference, especially if you stack them on one unit, can get to the point where they're doubling or save them from being doubled by enemies, making them more durable. Next, let's talk about strength boosters being Rocky Burdock. To get Rocky Burdock, you will want to plant mixed herb seeds, angelica seeds or purple flower seed and again you can buy purple flower seeds from the foreign merchants in the monastery getting strength boosters can be huge it can allow you to deal enough damage to one round in combat or if you're like one point away from decreasing the the weight penalty you receive from your weapons it can be super clutch and super helpful next let's talk about magic boosters which you can get from southern fodland seeds or yellow flower seeds now, magic, much like strength, can allow you to deal more damage uh, to the enemy, but also it increases the range of other faith magics, such as warp, rescue, physic, fortify, super important things that you want to have to be able to heal more effectively, and also warp and rescue units into or out of situations that they did not, that might either be risky or beneficial or, or what have you. So, magic boosters can be super clutch for that. I personally like to give a lot of magic boosters to my warpers, such as Lysithia, Linhart, and Manuela, so they can warp even farther. And I'll also give magic boosters to, like, Flane, who has rescue, so she can rescue from a farther distance. Now, you can go for dexterity and resistance and defense and all sorts of different stat boosters. Uh, I just think that these are the three most important the one I focus on during my playthrough. But you can check these. You can check all the other ones out at Serenus Forest. Again, I'll post the link in the description. Next, I want to talk about an early game gambit that is really slept on. And I don't think people use it enough. I know that I didn't use it very often, but it can be super clutch and can really help you in the early game. Immobilize a large group of enemy units, putting your, allowing your units to be safer and putting them in better situations, right? And this gambit is Poison Tactics. It has a very wide area of effect similar to blaze and it doesn't deal very much damage it does poison the enemy which is a nice side effect but the biggest thing is that as all gambit all attack gambits do it freezes the enemy in place and lowers their stats so the battalions that have poison tactics are the alliance guard bridget hunters Pilardo bodyguards enhanced wyvern company and the merchant military some of these are really low ranks, such as D and E rank battalions, and you can equip them from the very beginning as long as you can get your hands on them. So again, consider using poison tactics if you have the opportunity to limit a large range of enemies to keep your units safe. Now I want to talk about some really clutch gambits that are going to help you throughout the entire playthrough, and especially one of them seems like it might honestly not be that good but I want to tell you why it is good. So first, the one that is just obviously good is Blessing. 
Blessing allows your units to survive a lethal hit at 1 HP. So essentially, say Dimitri is at 10 HP, he has Blessing activated on him, and he gets hit by an attack that would kill him, doing like 20 damage or so. It leaves him with 1 HP alive, right? And it has an area of effect, so when you use the Gambit, it affects... Uh, it can affect up to four different u four units, and it can just be super clutch. It can allow you to deal with really scary bosses. You can do some really good bait, bait and switch tactics. Bait and switch being when you put a unit to lure in some enemies, take the lure in an enemy, take the hit, but then the enemy's close to you, so you can kill him on player phase. So really good. It's really good for bait and switch tactics. Uh, also, it's super good for taking on terribly, terribly tough bosses, such as uh, Golden Deer Endgame which it was basically necessary for me to do it there. And overall, it can just get you out of bad situations really, really well. So the battalions that have Blessing are the Empire Holy Magic users, Kingdom Priest, Alliance Sages, Hevering Prayer Troops, and SR Research Group. So look out for those battalions so that you can use Blessing in your playthrough. It saved me so many times, and I know it'll save you as well. So and next, I want to talk about Impregnable Wall. Impregnable Wall, when it's used, allows the unit who it is used on to only receive one damage from every attack, but in return they only deal one damage with every single attack they, they deal out while Impregnable Wall is active on them, and it lasts for one turn. Um, so Impregnable Wall, again, you deal one damage, so it sounds like that's not going to be very good, it sounds like you're, you're not going to be able to kill things essentially, right? You, you won't be able to kill things, but it allows you to, again, do more bait and switch tactics, but also, it allows you to block off enemies from certain areas. You can use choke points. So you think you want a Fortress Knight or something for a choke point. Well, you can just use someone with Impregnable Wall activated. Put them in a choke point, And that point is 100% safe for that turn. Unless there's thieves with paths and, and everything like that. Uh, but yeah, it, Impregnable Wall is so, so good. Don't sleep on it. Finally, I want to talk about enemy skills. And the fact that you really need to keep an eye on them. So enemy skills are regulated throughout the game, meaning if a unit, if an enemy unit is in a class, they always have the same skills. So a thief will always have paths, and a pass allows them to walk through your units. So if you build a wall, say with impregnable wall or something, you think you're safe, make sure to watch out for those thieves with paths because they will be able to sneak through your lines and kill your weaker units in the back. Uh, other things to look out for are archers who have poison strike, so they will always deal a good chunk of damage to you after the battle. The poison strike damage can't kill you, but again, it is it can pile up, and if you have two or three archers attacking one person, chances are they're going to die that turn, unless they have a lot of HP or a lot of defense. Another one to look out for is snipers who have poison strike still, but they also have vantage, so it is best to attack them up close when you can, because when they're on low health, they will attack first, and trust me, I've had that tricked me a few times to get my got my units killed and it's been really a really frustrating moment so watch out for that uh and other ones there's a lot of them that have breaker skills so like mercenaries have axe breaker uh cavaliers will and pegasus knights will have like sword breaker um fighters generals whatever else will have like lance breaker all sorts of stuff like that things to look out for um so just make sure to check your enemies skills before you go into battle if you notice your hit rate is really low it's be probably because the enemy is has a, a breaker skill on you so be wary of that and just in case you didn't know or you didn't notice you can actually check the skills at the at the bottom of the combat info window you can see all of the enemy skills listed out so make sure to keep an eye on that so that you don't get surprised by anything if you see an icon that you don't know what it means back out of the battle before you start it and go check the enemy and see what that combat art uh, combat art or not, not combat art and see what that ability does to keep yourself out of trouble it will be a huge save on you and honestly once i learned to just do this no matter what on maddening the playthrough got a lot easier there's a lot less surprises and i it genuinely had a better time with it so final tip final tip i've seen a lot of people I'd be really upset and they're giving up and they're saying, oh, I made it to the Miklon chapter and failed and got really upset about it. All I want to say is don't give up and I know that you can do it. I promise that Maddening is a very, very doable difficulty, uh, especially on New Game Plus. I'm actually doing a New Game Plus run right now uh, just because well, I already did a, a, a regular playthrough to get the yellow title screen, you know, the special title screen 
Um, but now I'm doing a, a New Game Plus on my New Game Plus file, and it's honestly a lot of fun. So if you're trying to do it for the, the, the yellow title screen, it's just, you don't need the yellow title screen. Just go for New Game Plus and, you know, get your units some important skills like Death Blow and Darting Blow and and all sorts of other things. Get their authority ranking way up to use really good battalions right from the beginning and all sorts of things so that you can have a, a more fun time and you can still experience maddening mode. It won't get, I'm sure, like I haven't played all the way through New Game Plus on maddening, but I'm sure that it gets harder towards the end still, even though at the beginning it's still pretty easy. But yeah, so keep everything I said in mind as you're playing through. And if you have any questions about uh, maddening mode and how to handle it better, Leave them in the comments, and if you know the answer, please answer other people's questions. I'll do my best to answer questions when I can, but if I don't see it and you know the answer, please answer. It helps people out. So just a, a quick recap, make sure to take advantage of gardening. Make sure to not sleep on good early game gambits that have a really wide attack range, such as poison tactics. Uh, don't forget the clutch gambits, such as blessing and impregnable wall that can get you out of a lot of sticky situations and keep your units alive, and uh, even though they take a lot of hits. And make sure, just don't give up. You can do this. Watch out for enemy skills. This is possible, I promise. So thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Fire Emblem discussion if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys next time.